And here we go. This is this is Flash Somebody at the Dropping a Coil Show with Larry Woods and Rob Works of RealLibertyMedia.com fame. Mm. And special thanks out to the old Mr. G for his stuff he does for us to keep us going. Tonight we're a little late. Had a late start. So thanks for your patience, Grim. You're hurting cats. And uh, we got for the uh, bots and bodies for your reading entertainment tonight. We've got Barman, Beetle, Cowboy Tech, Grimnir, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti, Asmo, Circle O, hello, she's outside. Duh, hey, duh, me, Grumpy Work, Grumpy Not Work. <laughs> Grab <laughs> seat. That made me laugh. Don't ask why. J Dread. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> and me too. Meister Brow, Prince Rob works at you. Trust no one, number one. No. Banna White, Weather Dork Phantom, CC66, Chaskara, Chloe Singular, Cyborg Noodle, Dad, E Man, Imbecile, Gromit Kiss, Matt. WJ202002. Pwn Sauce, Quasimodo Sock Puppet, Smart Ass, The Holiest Roger, and Zpix. Okay, and that's your chitter chatterers, questioners, and such in the chat room for you guys tonight. And with that, cool. Larry and Rob, take it away. Afternoon, Larry. <laughs> Good, good, good day. Yeah. Um, I don't really have a, a set topic or planned discussion today. It's going to be kind of just a, a, a rambling free-for-all, I suppose. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I got a, a little something and not much. Uh, in, in Monday's meeting, our R&D meeting, we were discussing the two dissimilar metals uh, forming a capacitor-type system and charging it and seeing uh, a fluid move between the two plates. Uh, that's a propulsion system that the Russians have been using since the 90s. And oddly enough, Hunt for Red October was just on TV, which is the first submarine that the Russians used with that type of a propulsion system in it. Huh. It's totally silent. Uh, they can't tell what you are in the water unless they know what sound that you're really making. Uh, yeah. So it's it was kind of interesting. It, we talk about something in the R and D group, and then boom, there's something about it on TV. Uh huh. I don't know how that happens. Synchronicity. Yeah. But that's that's kind of an interesting process. You put two pieces of dissimilar, uh, different types of metal, in the fluid, and put a drop of, of colored whatever food coloring in, in between them and when you charge the plates it moves that fluid out of it that's propulsion without motion mm -hmm. so how does that uh, in what way does the fluid move so you got two what are, I assume square plates right yeah, little little rectangular plates was in, in a demonstration that we did. Okay. Uh, uh, and you put it in any kind of a liquid and drop a, a drop of food coloring between the two plates. That's just to be able to see the movement. Yeah. Right. When you when you energize the two plates, it describes the torus field, uh, the toroidal field, by pushing the uh, dye out, and it curves back around just like the torus field oh wow yeah so the fluid moves, hey, ar moves around in a in a in that a, was the, yeah go that ahead. was the link i tried to send you i think 
Hold on. Let me post it. Take a look and tell me if this is similar. Because okay. it sounds like what you're talking about, but I can't be sure. But I can post a link and ask you, is this it? And there it is. So, because what you're talking about was describing what I was seeing when I saw this activity. I don't know what to call it. Post that and drop in a coil, too, so I can see it. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Larry. I forgot about that. And we'll put it right here on. I don't normally bring up the chat room. Cause oh, I that's right. I forget. At the same time. I forget. I'm forget. not multi-talented like you guys. Mm. No, but you know where all the bodies are buried. <laughs> <laughs> so I put it in the uh, in the drop. Oh, in the yeah. Uh, but it sounded to me, this is what I sent you guys, and it just sounded like what you were talking about, but I'm not positive. But this is this is a similar reaction. It's just not a. a it's, it's not done electrically, uh, or is it? No. Uh, but the, the the similar metals form a capacitor, as you know, because there's different uh, potential between the two of them, and when you energize those that difference in potential sets up a toroidal field that expels the liquid between them. And that's just demonstrated by food coloring or some sort of dye in the water. Uh, right. So when you say it expels the water from in between them, does it just go in all directions? It does forms it a toroidal field. Yeah, it, it, it goes forward, or it has a, a singular direction depending upon the polarity of the charge. Okay. You can make it go forward or backwards just by changing the polarity. Okay. And uh, that is the new trolling motor. Right. Yeah, I'll put that in a coil, drop the coil in the water and energize it, and you've got a trolling motor that doesn't make any noise to scare the fish. Right. Hey. Well, put that link that I was comparing it to into the notes help or hurt your show. Yeah, I'm I'm still watching that. That's a really interesting little video. I sent it to you a couple of days ago. Yeah, I, I saw it. Uh, mm. This reminded me of, of a glass ball that I saw one time. There's all, all these little dots in it. They're all different colored. And I don't know how they make that either. Ah, a few things you don't know. <laughs> Jeez. Lots how, of stuff I how don't weird. Know. Oh, come on, man. Between the three of us, we don't know shit. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> I probably don't know more than you don't know, though. <laughs> That's too funny. Yeah, but see, you understand what that means, too. So, hmm. It's secret code talk amongst the nerds. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I was hoping that would uh, get to you. And I sent you another link, to the, uh because I thought the uh, the structure of the link struck me as something that you guys would more than likely be familiar with. Let me find who wrote it. Uh, which one is it? Let's see. I think that's... Nope. It's different. Okay. I see. Give me a minute. I'll be right back. Okay. Um, okay. We'll go with fishing report. Yeah. Hey. Yay. Hey, Sunday. No, it was Friday. Friday. Uh, went with a friend. He caught three. I caught five. It's pretty normal for us because I handle the boat, and I am a professional boat handler. I can make it where the guy in front cannot cast to any place that's got a fish in it. <laughs> so now I keep all the good spots for me. Forget them. That's the uh, uh, it Remind the, me to run the boat, man. <laughs> <laughs> the, the three fish that he caught went from two to four pounds, and the five fish that I caught went from five to eight pounds or four to eight pounds, and I caught two and eight pound range. So it was fun day, but nice. most of them were just busting with eggs. Some of the smaller, little bitty ones were uh, were the male fish. Yeah. But the females that I caught just 
they would have been five pound fish. They had that many eggs in them. It looks like they were about to explode. Wow. Yeah. yeah, so you put those back, let them finish spawning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I only keep what I'm going to eat. And, and my partner that I went fishing with, he likes to keep anything he catches, but I won't let him keep anything but the little bitty boy fish. Yeah. Especially this time of year. Because once the, once the female lays the eggs, they both fan the nest until it, uh, till the eggs hatch. And then the female runs the male off because he'll eat the fry. Right. Wow. Yeah. Fun time. Fun stuff. Yeah. All the well, flowers I, in the woods are blooming. I oh, threw yeah. that link I was bringing up to you guys into yeah. the, uh, Wire, and the title of it. I mean, if that doesn't get you, just pass on it. But I watched the link. And this guy's kind of interesting. I don't know if you're familiar with him or not. Yeah. Oh, no, Shane Harriman. Of course. Oh, okay. Well, I I'm so bad with names, Larry. Be glad I can remember yours. <laughs> I remember faces and not names. I had well, to get. I may not remember you guys. I had to get Cirque's name tattooed on my arm so I wouldn't forget who she was. <laughs> That's why I wear a name tag so I know who I am. <laughs> well, anyway, the guy says consciousness is not in your brain. And I thought you two guys might have a good conversation about a thing like that. Well, I believe that there's a shared consciousness because no sooner did did I realize about these coils and vortex math than it seemed like thousands of people around the world knew about it and understood it. Yep. Uh, so I, I think that knowledge sort of comes in spurts. Once one person picks it up, it's sort of subliminally transferred or some way uh, to everybody else. It's that hundredth monkey effect. Yeah. Yeah. And shared, uh, uh, this, I believe there's a shared consciousness uh, that we all share based on the, the DNA talking to each other. Because the DNA has is is way more complex than than it's understood. I'm, I'd be I would imagine. Yeah. Um, but I know they've they've proven that DNA has little antennas all over them. Yeah, and. Once all the junk DNA, the things we think is junk, once all that reconnects, I think we'll be able to do lots of things with our brains. Telekinesis, telepathy, things like that. Right. Yeah, I think, uh, well, if you believe the stories that are out there about, uh, well, the Anunnaki, the, the uh, Zechariah Sitchin books, where he talks mm -hmm. about the, the the human race was genetically engineered to work in the mines, basically, to mine gold. Um, and they were given a subservient demeanor, and that's when we lost our 24th chromosome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they didn't give it to us. Right. Uh, I don't know if we came from monkeys or not. I'm not real sure that I agree with that. I think we were a subspecies from something else. Yeah, well, uh, I think it was Neanderthal type. Yeah. We were in the Neanderthal stage well, at that if, point. If you look around the world at different people's head types, we've got some Neanderthals still living today. Yeah. With a, yes, we do. Yeah, with, well, <laughs> not just mentally. Oh. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the, the big brow ridge and, and things like that, the extra large head. My head yeah. is so little that there's no room for a brain in it. <laughs> and I put yeah. my head over. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. even a blind squirrel cops in it. <laughs> <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> well, 
Well, that's what I read anyway. But that's, yeah, that's, could have been a could have been a story. And the Anunnaki wrote things down that we have translated now, and the stories in the Bible mm-hmm. are plagiarized from the Emerald Tablets and the story of Gilgamesh and the Anunnaki legends. Hey, well, they kind of insinuate that when they say it was written 80 years after a guy died in, in a foreign language. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, okay, I'm going to go with that story for sure. <laughs> yeah. I, well, fell, I fell right at, out my school window, right on my head. And then there's the, uh, the uh, God is saying it, uh, the whole story of Christ was made up by the Romans, the Roman Emperor, the Flavians. Well, it is a good way to do that. Though. You yeah. sabotage your God by making him a human. Well, they it puts wanted, a, it. It puts wanted, doubt in the mind of the believer. Though. Well, the Roman Caesars the, wanted to be uh, worshipped as gods, and uh, and they were too. And they were, or they were else. trying, yeah, they were, or else. Yeah. And, uh, Fuck yeah. and that's what happened is the Jews, um, refused. And that's when they came up with this Jesus story to, uh, get them. But it, Jesus is just an avatar for Caesar. Yeah, back, back in those days of extreme suppression, they were always prophesying a new Messiah is going to come and lead us out of this. And right. so the Romans picked it up and ran with it. Yeah. There's a video I posted. It went around the chat room for oh, a couple of weeks ago. I guess it was two or three weeks, maybe. Well, about, all about that. I forget what the name of it was. Did you ever watch that, Flash? I'm not positive right now. I, I was smoking and I got stuck on the quest. Oh, you got, got stoned and you missed it. Well, the, this guy, <laughs> that link that I posted that asked you guys if you're familiar with him and you were, I can't remember his freaking name. But oh, his, his, yeah, okay. Well, his claim seems to be very logical and mathematical that we're all connected. Everything is connected. Doesn't matter what it is. In long run, you're connected. Well, how do you explain that in simple, just ordinary words that don't baffle the idiot? You know? I can handle that one. Okay, Larry. Thank you. Frequency. Every every person has a specific frequency to their body, like a fingerprint. All humans fall within a certain frequency range, but we're all a little bit different, so we've got a fingerprint. If your frequency harmonizes with somebody else's frequency, you share the same knowledge. And I think that's what he was getting at. Everything is, everything is about frequency and the interaction of toroidal fields. The whole, everything is about the interaction of toroidal fields. If they are in harmony, they attract. If they're in disharmony, they repel. Mm. All right. Well, what would be a side effect of something attracting, uh, or a response? How do you how do you even describe that? The woman you can't live without. Oh, her. <laughs> uh, your very best friend. Yeah. You starting a sentence and somebody you know finishing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. People being late to the radio because they forgot what time it was. Uh oh. No, I knew, just, that. I knew exactly what time it was. I just was asleep when it happened. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the dog ate his homework. Yep. I knew him. I knew him in school. Yeah, the neighbor's dog ate the homework. Cause I his his dog mom ate. wrote him notes. <laughs> yeah, the so neighbor's I, pit I posted the homework. that link in the chat. Um, Okay. To uh, the Caesar's Caesar's Messiah, the Roman conspiracy to invent Jesus. Ah, yeah. There, ooh. And, and it talks about how uh, if you read the New Testament alongside the the writings of Josephus, mm-hmm. they parallel. 
And so basically the whole premise of that is the whole New Testament is all about uh, Rome's conquering of uh, Israel. And who was it written by? Just who compiled? Yeah, but who compiled the Bible? Oh, the Roman Catholics. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, Josephus was a was a traitor. He was a Jew who was captured, and he was given uh, a choice: uh, convert or die, <laughs> basically. And so he converted, and then he, but he this he was really uh, he had the gift of gap. And so he was so good at uh, <coughs> advocating his own case that he ended up becoming their propaganda uh, czar, if you will. Isn't that pretty much like our philosophy today? Right. Be like us or die? Yep. You're either with us or you're against us. Yep. If you don't conform to society, we will put you in jail. What is normal is what the vast majority of people think is normal. Yeah. And they will, they will uh -oh. ostracize you if you're not. Larry said the T word. What? Larry, Larry said word. the T word. Think. Oh, oh, oh. Don't say that. That's why I have a headache. People might get the wrong idea, Larry. <laughs> they might think he expects something from them, like them to think. What are you, an aspirin salesman or something? <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, I'm I'm selling one-way tickets to Africa. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. And okay. went round and round with a friend today who sent me all kinds of propaganda on the coronavirus that was put out by the American Medical Society. <laughs> Boy, howdy. If you believe in the AMA, right. turn the radio off right now. I don't want you to listen to anything that I'm saying because you won't believe it. <laughs> Just go, go ahead and stick your fingers in your ears. Commence to na 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 na. That's it. Put your head back in the sand and let the lawnmower run over your ass. Wow. <laughs> wow. Don't hold back, Larry. <laughs> well, I, how you feel? I I got on him for believing what mainstream tells him. I yeah. said, do some research. You've got you've got the strongest instrument in the world right in front of you right now. Your computer. Anything, anything that you want to know, you can find out. Don't believe the mainstream. Read everything and make your own damn decisions. Thank you very much. Ta-da. Well, wait a minute. Now, what if somebody was to do just exactly what you just recommended, yet their loyalty to mother state does not allow them to accept the truth as, wait a minute, I've been screwed here? Then what? In that case, go to something that you know for a fact and check out what everybody else says about it. And follow oh, people advice. that believe what you believe. Yeah, yeah. Peer pressure usually gets something going. Yeah. yeah. But to dupe this many people all at once, man, from yeah, the very we, first moment, I said, this has got to be, you guys are nuts. Are you out of your mind, coronavirus? Uh, uh, in this crap for censors since TV and radio came out. Yeah. You tell the public a lie often enough yeah. on a public forum, and they'll believe it. But, Larry, I'm still the dummy that doesn't believe this stuff, and it's so dangerous, and tra-la-la-la-la. There's still a lot of that out there, Two no matter what. Five. Just going against the state is a crime. Yep, two plus two, two is five. I won't kill you until you tell me that. And I'm going to make you want yeah. to buy all the time until you they, tell me two plus two is five. Yeah, and they've got them all doing it, too. Yeah. <laughs> and you can see it. How, all right, what, what is it? Is it the way we look upon this thing that makes us see it from this particular light? Or are we just smart enough to see the truth for what it truly is? I don't, how do, should I slap myself on the back? Well, I, I think that 
what hurt me is that I read 1984 when I was a young person and realized what it was saying and watched it come to fruition before 1984. Yeah. We are a police state. We are a surveillance state. Uh, and as of tomorrow, anything that you have ever paste, uh, posted on Facebook is public information and they can redistribute it. So you need to, to put a disclaimer on your Facebook page today that says that under no circumstances do you give permission to Facebook to reprint, repost, or use in any way any information, pictures, or anything that you have on your Facebook page. Wow. Copyright it. That's a copyright. Yeah, I know. I, I quit Facebook a long time ago. Good idea. Yeah, I, I never, never, I never really got into Facebook. Mm-hmm. There's so many other I had, I had a family, a bunch of girls in my family. I had to. Oh man! And then when I, when I didn't have to anymore, they got mad at me. They're still mad at me. No. Oh. But hey, you know what? You That's black not. sheep. I know. Uh, so you get used to being a black sheep. Doesn't matter. I would hate to be a statist in this in this reality that we're in compared to the story we're hearing. Oh, man. Because a lot of people are going to take a beating over going along with it, and they don't realize that. They, they'll never see that side of it. Yeah. Hang on. Miss Girl's, but, yeah. Miss Girl's yeah. asking a question. Oh, uh, I didn't put some She said, uh, that, that is a fake thing, Larry. That's not new. Can someone tell Larry that? Um. Uh, I'm not What's sure exactly that? what she meant by that. The copyright thing. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Oh, for Facebook. That oh. That thing you said, Larry, about Facebook oh. being okay. uh, yeah. they're they're yeah. taking yeah. possession of all the all the um information, yeah. Information and uh uh okay, I'm having a brain fart. So that uh, that is fake. <laughs> That's what Moose is saying. Moose is yeah. saying that's fake. That doesn't really yeah, happen. That doesn't really exist. Uh, so they just made they a meme. think that maybe Facebook doesn't collect your information, that the that the information on all of no, the internet doesn't go through the central computer no, no, first? No, that's not what she's saying. She's saying they just didn't yeah. make it a policy on Facebook. Oh, no, it's probably always been that way. Yeah, it's always yeah. been that way. They've been doing it, but it's not an actual... They're not actually claiming copyright on your intellectual property. No, they're not actually claiming copyright on it, but they're claiming the ability to use anything that you have posted for their own benefit. Without your permission. Without your permission. Yeah. Well, yeah. You can't ever go back at them over it. It's their property. Yeah. They're, taking, they're, they're taking control of well, your property. But... Like, See, it wouldn't really matter anyway, because who, who, what are you going to do? Sue, uh, what's his name? Zucker fuck? Yeah. How? Yeah. With who? What do you got? An army of lawyers in Washington, D.C. ready to fight him? Yep. <laughs> Court yeah. means who has the most money wins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but see, we're, we're Americans, Larry. We were brought up to believe that we all had the equal opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> With if your name is Kennedy or Carol. Clinton or Jefferson, or, if you know, you related to some scholarships, I'd have never got through school. Yeah, but Larry, you're not wealthy like Rothschild, you mean. No, you're I'm just a wealthy. comfortable, nice guy. I'm, I'm talking about that psychotic wealth that makes you, you know, makes you do children in the dark. I'm willing to learn how. Ooh. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'll pass. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm willing to learn what it's like to live in the lap of luxury. Really? Would you Would you turn all this in to be a Rothschild in the morning? Uh, not to be a Rothschild, but to have their money. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to live on a houseboat in a beautiful river somewhere rather than in this house in the middle of the city. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you know what? I was thinking you'd be more uh, greedy than that. But you know, you're probably right. You what you'd do with it is you'd waste it on the rust of us. Yeah. Rusty hooks. 
you're a communist deep down at heart. You couldn't eat the steak without knowing everybody else had one. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the yeah. only reason I've done what we're doing now is to provide a future for two of my friends. <laughs> see? <laughs> it's not hard to see that. I mean, I, if you're looking for it, I suppose. Felt like giving you a little slap on the back. You know? Thank you. Well, it's been a tough couple months with all this social drama going on lately because people don't know how to fucking read. And then what the ones that do know how to read don't understand what the fuck they read. They believe that the lie is the truth, and then they, they read the truth, and they call that a lie. Well, it was oh, on TV. Wow. They can't lie to you. It's got to be real. <laughs> <laughs> Where did they get that idea from? It's just... They're going all backwards. They're, they're, yeah, they're, it, the uh, it's uh, like the you know well the saying it's on the internet it must be true that's <laughs> uh, it's yeah. uh, which is the opposite. I mean, oh, wow. you will never ever find any real uh, fully uh, disclosed truth on TV. You can hell no. You well, can you, it'll find be disguised it, as comedy. You can find it on the internet though. Mixed in with all the bullshit and disinformation and misinformation and poisoning of the well. But you can find it. I found a link of an American TV show from like the 90s or something with some black guy, Ice-T. And the link, he's mocking viruses, exposing them. Oh, that was bullshit. Oh, that was bullshit. Remember this one? That was bullshit. And it, this is mainstream TV. So they're... They disguise the truth as comedy, so people laugh at it. Yeah. If you're not intelligent enough to understand they're making a fucking joke out of something, you know, terribly serious, then you will believe what you see. Right. Well, then it's just got to be confusing for a, a TV-minded kind of watcher. I think more people need to listen to what George Carlin has to say. Yeah, here, here. Well, My they took him out. Yeah, yeah, but they took him out, too, for saying it. Well, yeah. If he was to get up on stage and say the stuff he's saying 20 years ago, he'd be... Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, but they did, they did get dead, him out. He'd, he'd be dead again. <laughs> after he spoke to Congress. Because yeah. he said, I, I expect to live 25 or so years. And like within three years, he died of a heart attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just I've one. seen all that conspiracy nut stuff about guns. The CIA's got a gun, and they can yeah. shoot you with a dart that it, uh, induces a heart attack or the similarity of one. So yeah, and, yeah. and, and then that a bubble of air, and it'll make your heart stop. <laughs> and then look what we learned through all this co uh, coronavirus crap is that the people that sign your death certificate can be bought off for fucking money to make another disease more important just because you died with it. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, if you get 3,600 uh, bucks for everybody that dies of it, you're going to say everybody that died of lung disease, of cancer, or whatever, everybody you can write off for it, you're going to, if you're going to get 3,600 bucks. That's why we have more cases than anybody else. Uh, it's thirty six hundred just to say they have it. Yeah, it's twelve grand if they die from it. See, so there this is this all the result of all of us bouncing off the of different frequencies? <laughs> well, I think there's a good frequency and a bad frequency, and I'm not sure which one I've got yet. We'll find out in the end. Yeah. Well, uh, oh. I don't, you know, I don't even look at it as good or bad. It's harmonious and disharmonious. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but see, what's disharmonious to Rome's makes me happy. <laughs> no? But wait, he had to block me because he couldn't stand my opposition to his cause. A positive but, charge and a negative charge, they repel. Right. They try. I tried, tried to help the guy out and make him aware that you're the victim of a, the world's biggest fraud yeah you're acting like a complete lunatic nut job over absolutely falling from the side out. yeah well, yeah but see what these kind of people want to do is control what i do and i'm not for that i'm dead against that yeah. i got freedom here to come and go as i like 
if, if it's be if like feel, me or die, kill me. Yeah, but if I feel I'm risking my life out there because I could catch the corona and die, that's my problem. Yeah. That's the way the society has made. They've made that clear. You're on your fucking own out there with that shit. The now, only thing you're that's worried about it, for me is I can't get a haircut and I can't go and sit down in a restaurant to eat. I go out when I want to go out. I go fishing when I want to go fishing. I play in the yard when I want to play in the yard. Mm. Yeah. You rebel. Yeah, you're a rebel. Well, that's the way you it like is here. Rob. That's the way it is here. We weren't on lockdown. We were. Right, right, right. You know, the restaurants. Voluntary, closed, right? And, and, yeah. Yeah, I haven't had a haircut in, in three months, but. You know, uh, that's normal for me. <laughs> well, oh, okay. Well, they opened up the the hair salons in downtown here, and uh, they're, they're, doing, they're just playing. I think the Danes are just playing along. I don't I'll think they ever bought it for me. They're not going to open here until the eleventh. Oh, yeah. that's faster than here. Yeah, the, they're going to drag their ass with the bars and the restaurants. Yeah. Piss the drive-through on my restaurant is back open, but the the, the is there a drive-through at the bar? <laughs> no, but they do have Damn curbside it. pickup. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking world we live in! Uh, is is everybody just a little short of an IQ of eighty or what? Yeah, so are, the, are the two o'clock women on the sidewalk by the bar? The nah, really I, I don't know. I don't, I don't go hang out down there. <laughs> right, but how do you justify all this drama that we've all, you know, been reading and seeing on the internet for the last two months over a flu? I don't. I, it's I don't going on. People are being arrested. Point one percent of the people that get it die, and they have pre-existing conditions. It's right, right. not as bad as the flu. No, but they're arresting people and pushing. Oh, Some yeah. governors want to push this uh, lockdown further than they've gone already. Oh yeah. They now, how many? They won't how many people? Until August. All right. So, how many fucking idiots are there out there that do not understand they're lying to? You? <laughs> how fucking hard is this to see? They're afraid. Millions of people worldwide have died. Don't go outside. You'll die. Uh, so they got all the old people controlling all the young people with this whining. I'm going to die. Scared. Yeah. I'm not scared. You, you I'm scared? I'm not either. Hell no. Well, then who the fuck is... Oh, Rome's. Never mind. I just figured it. I cracked the wheel. There you go. It's all Rome's fault. Yeah. Yeah. And he keeps showing up. So where's this fucking virus? Come on. Chop, yeah. chop. I want to see some bodies falling here. Fuckers. Yeah. Yeah, I still haven't uh, met or known of anybody. Yeah, two months of this bullshit, happened. and I don't even get a dead body. I'm like, well, one point. of my friend's granddaughters caught the flu and had a really high temperature. Coronavirus is a low temperature, and this lady is bound and determined that that little girl got coronavirus. It was yeah. a normal flu. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, they would see it on TV. It, I do not get that. That has got to be a staple of the world. Yeah. Um, they saw it. I was like that in Scotland, England, here, Denmark. There's something magical to certain people about this fucking television set shit. Well, yeah. It sets you I mean, it, I'm a, seeing it. It sets you up into, into a hypnotic state. And, yeah. and programs directly yeah. into your subconscious. If if you want to know that that's for real, watch a small child that's playing in the same room where the TV is on. They won't pay any attention at all to the TV program. As soon as the commercial comes on, they're locked into that TV. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's been years since I've been around children, so hmm. I'll take your word for it. And I think I'll join you on the pot there, Mr. Robert. Oh, sounds like a plan. Let's have a, let's have a smoke out. Right? Uh, well, you know, with all this, with all this inconvenience in life going on right now, to be totally honest, nothing changed here. Now, it may change later with some kind of financial bullshit they'll play. But, uh, sir, didn't miss any work or any of that. Okay. So... Yeah, and we got had her home, 
And then her, her brother-in-law and her, her sister came over a couple of times and helped us out with some uh, bigger projects we had on the property. Yeah. So everything, every, everything that's been a, a bad thing about it, we've turned into a good thing about it. Right. And so, as long as we were supposed to keep it under 10 people, we're not that big of a house. We're 10 people in one room. is pretty crowded. <laughs> yeah. Well, so they all they, like to sit in the same room. It's weird. Are they going to let her keep working from home now? Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. And she says, so, well, and I, I'll refuse to go in any more in three days in a week. Cool. So, yeah. Well, she's got that kind of control over well, so it. So she's, she's kind of happy the virus came along then. Well, in, yeah, in, a, <laughs> in that I, I hate, yeah, oh, man. The benefits outweigh the uh, the deficits by far. Out, what we're concerned about is the financial level set of this can hit later. Yeah. But so it depends on, you know, what the government here does. So what you're really saying is is that the coronavirus actually improved your quality of life. No, it didn't improve it. It it uh it contributed to the improvements that were already made because she was already available to work home. Oh, oh, but, that was but, already in place. Yeah, but oh, what okay. they had was they have these meetings that they you know ten people have to attend. So as a to do that, they had to all go in. Well, when this virus thing came up, the company found it financially uh, feasible to set everybody up with Internet service. Uh -huh. Because this isn't over the air, regular Internet. It's some kind of a insurance company, private, blah, 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 the security Dark web. Okay. I don't know. I All I know is they supply the Internet to CERC. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. So she and has she's a separate got a, Internet connection that she does work on? I think so. Something deep like that. Yeah. And they have 10 people talking, but they had to add all this to the job, uh, to the computer system. Yeah. Be and they did it because of the corona. Well, the money yeah. they're saving, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. They're probably balanced their budget over it. Yeah. Well, some companies, they know how to do this game shit. They can make money in times when there's uh, everybody else is losing it. Right. Depends on what paperwork you're shuffling, doesn't it? No shit. <laughs> Come on. We don't live in a money world. We live in a promise world. I'll pay you next week for a carrot. Oh, yeah. Hey. Uh, OPM. Well, there you go. What? OPM. Absolutely. But we've been dragging this horse down the road for 106 years. What's yep. been rough? Yeah, yeah, there you go. It, that, it's getting heavy. They, yeah. They're running out of excuses. So what are they going to tell the public the next time the banks don't have any fucking money? Well, yeah, the, the Ponzi scheme requires a constant flow of new blood. But they've run out. And they're they, at the end they, of that flow. Yeah, so now what? So. And look at the generation they're raising right now, the 20-year-olds. Holy fuck, Batman. Well, it, it, it was a 100-year plan, so they're seven years behind schedule. You think? Yeah. The, the, the Fed was never intended to be a, a, an ongoing, um, sustainable system. Didn't the Fed's lease run out a few years back? Yeah, like seven years ago. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, it's all bullshit. Uh, it's all so much bullshit. It's fun, though. But, you know, like you said, this stuff helped me, but it's got to have helped you in ways, too, that you can, it's like a balancing thing. You know, you lose something here, you gain something over here. You just got to know to, how to hunt. Right, right. Right. Well, a lot of people don't aren't aware. It's like I I didn't know that there was available land for sale in America right now for a three hundred dollar down payment. <laughs> it's a buck plus the filing fee. It's like two ninety nine. So you could buy freaking three acres of un, 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 uh, developed land in in a major state for three <laughs> what it's like thirteen grand. And you could get it on credit on top of the whole fucking thing. I thought, damn, that's in, yeah. if it's in New York, it's in every fucking state. You just got to yeah. know, well, okay, these things are not, they're not uh, 
public domain. They're private information. It's inside. It's like insider trading. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you can go, you can go find uh, disclosed properties. Or what is not disclosed, but they're behind in the taxes. What oh, tax distress? Distress. Right? Yeah, distressed properties. There you go. And well, well but you got to know wh- out where to find Texas, them. Out west Texas, in the desert, you can buy land for a hundred bucks an acre. When I was growing up, you could homestead sixty acres for yeah. free. Hundred forty, or hundred. Yeah. Oh. 160. Uh, didn't the Fed gobble all that up since? Oh, yeah. Did they repossessed it all or something? Yeah. Been shut down. Folks been forced off. I think your Alaska still has homesteadable property. It might. It might. But who wants to go where it's that cold? Who wants to live in a frozen wasteland? Yeah. yeah. And we're all connected, and this is the best we can do. I, I, I. Um. Yeah, and I'm not really complaining about my particular circumstances. I'm complaining about other people's circumstances because I read about it, and it's like, wow, that's some shit. You know, who wants to be bothered with that kind of crap in your life? Blah blah blah. But outside of that, I don't have any problems. Unless you want to give me one, Rob, or call me a name or something. No, but there is this formula that needs to be solved. And what is that? Uh, is there a link to go uh, with the formula, or is it a verbal formula? No, but that brings up something. Did you see that uh, article posted recently about the guy that was uh, uh, saw these two mathematical equations on the chalkboard and thought they were the homework for the weekend, went home and solved them both, and they turned out to be these equations that nobody had been able to solve for like 100 years or something? No, I, that, that brainiac stuff. stuff. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't do the brainiac stuff very well. <laughs> well, I don't. I think I show me a picture, but show me a picture and I can draw it. <laughs> Let me just solve two unsolved problems. Here, I'll post it in the chat. What is the No, it doesn't. Mm. Uh, I mean, oh, okay. It's, it's something you're talking it's about. It's just, just, just trivial. Uh, trivial. We'll play trivial. Trivial stuff. Mm. Uh, mm. Incidentals. Uh, yeah. Well, so this guy, uh, George Danzig, uh, after getting late to class, he copied the blackboard from the blackboard two problems thinking they were homework and then solved them. They were actually two famous unsolved statistics problems, hmm. which earned him his Ph.D. Oh, hmm. paperwork. I yes. learned in so, probabilities and yeah. statistics class that you can make anything into anything that you want when you change the numbers around. Yeah, you, <laughs> you can make Suit statistics yourself. say yeah. just about anything you want to, yeah, just to, based on how you plug the numbers in. So, but that was well, interesting. This present administration must be giving you guys some real numbers to play with. No, what? Hmm. Well, we're we're in the middle. Of, we're not even near the end of whatever this freaking Corona crap is, right? So, whenever they end this crap, they're going to start another one right away. Yeah. The, the, they're priming the pump now for the second coming. Back and they're not even pulled out yet. I mean, this is like, wow, this is like seeing my, my home country being raped. Yeah. By, by, yeah. A, gang, by a gang of Jewish bankers. And it's really un, unattractive. If you, look over, if you look over the past uh, election years, there's been a virus in every election year so far. SARS, uh, Ebola, AIDS, huh. all been during election year. Huh. Imagine Maybe it. it's trying to tell us something. Yeah, they're trying to manipulate it. You think? Well, Larry, you are smarter than I don't, thought. Don't hold hands anymore. <laughs> well, okay, I'll, I'll tell you what. You're the older guy here. Why don't you tell us what is fucking wrong with your isolation program? Why don't you? Okay, first of all, 
you you got to have sunshine and fresh air and dirt to to get your immune system going. If you're cooped up inside your dirty house with all the germs and sick people, you're not going to get well fast. So that's kind of silly. If you keep well, what if you're isolated by yourself? What what if the bad side of that is horrible. If you're isolated by yourself, there's nothing yeah. to worry about. You're not going to get anything. Your mental, your mental uh, abilities diminish after periods of time. Depends human, on what human or beings. Not you use your brain. Okay, but see, most human beings are not like uh, you and Grim. Isolators, people that the rest of us are like Klingons. Got to have a partner. I like individuals and hate people. Right, exactly. Okay, I understand that. I'm just not one of them. I'm a different. I kind of like that, only not completely. I just don't like to talk to them very much. But outside of that, they're okay. I see (laughs) mankind as an infestation. All we do is destroy stuff. (sighs) It's our poor upbringing. Please. That's it. If we weren't raised to be cannibals and barbarians, what would we be? Come on. Do the math, Mr. Smart Guy. Do the math. And and greed has made it where nothing lasts anymore. A Mm. car used to be made out of quarter-inch thick sheet steel. When it got scratched and rusted, you ground off the rust and threw some paint on it, and you were good to go. (laughs) Yeah. Back in the day, yeah. Back in the day. But... See, they, they, they've convinced people that cheaper resources, blah, 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 over periods of time, blah, 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 blah. And in the long run, you could have bought one car that lasted 20 fucking years instead of four cars that lasted five. Yeah. And then every year, I worked in the UAW, every year the price of a car just, wow, it kept going up yeah, and going up. So and, much and when bullshit. The, and we're right. not happy with making something that will last forever. They make it designed to break down so they can sell parts. Planned obsolescence. And, yeah. and it, it put the labor market out. out of just. Yeah, we need to put the label makers out of business and take the safety labels off a thing, and then the world will square itself away. <laughs> right? I need instructions to operate shit. Well, if it gets more com- fine, but it's the safety labels. If it gets more complicated than a hammer, I, I'm in trouble. If you're not smart enough to know not to drink chlorine bleach, mm-hmm. that's just your problem. That is, there you go. That, hey, I like that. That's a good. That's a good answer. It's probably because, a good indication that you should probably drink some. Well, yeah. we're, <laughs> we're calling. They're calling the herd one way or another way. Yeah. And I just think this isolation pushes uh, weaker people that are in not such a good state of mind to begin with, pushes yeah. them over the edge. Whatever the yeah. edge is, do them. Yeah. They're not going to come out of this crap feeling, ever feeling uh, comfortable again. Right. I think that's the design of this whole story. And if you play the story out and, and you do it in the steps they tell you to do it in, you're going to end up in the box they want you in. Yeah. You want to hear something really scary? Maybe. Coronavirus is now infecting fruit. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yes, I saw that. A pawpaw with coronavirus. And I know it's coronavirus. I'm so scared. <laughs> well, okay. You, you know, they've got them convinced through the movies that they can, uh, that a, a, an animal virus can transform to a human. And I've tried to tell them, no, it doesn't work that way. You need oh, to you don't know you're Canadian, talking about. So they stop kissing their animals. Well, yeah. Yeah, well, okay, I've had dogs my whole fucking life. And I'm telling you, I've never had the same disease at the same time as my animal did. Yep. And <laughs> shit, my, my animals were sleep with my feet, eat, eat, you know, eat right next to me. They're all buddies forever kind of dogs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and I never came down with no dog illness. My dog never got what I had. So, why not? Different genes. 
Duh. All right. So, so here we got 320 fucking million people in America. And the majority of these people don't know that they've been lied to by their own government over a virus. Don't know it. Have no clue. Would never believe it if you told them. Will not listen to the fucking reality at all because they're saving your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when did saving my life become so fucking important is what I want to know. Yeah. You know? The way they pump the poison and shit into the water and the food supply, and these cunts got the nerve to tell me they're worried about my health. Yeah, really. Who are they fucking talking to? Some idiot? Yep, that's, how that's, I feel. Who like, that's who they're talking to, all the idiots. Oh. Mm. And when you say that out loud, people get insulted because you know what? Yeah, well, you know. They believe it. <laughs> the World Health Organization is there to make sure <laughs> we're healthy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll check it all out. Yeah. on all this shit. Exactly. Where would we be without modern medicine? Where would we be without Bill Gates to provide us with chips and vaccines at thousand bucks a shot? Oh, uh, I think Africa could drill for water by now if Bill Gates wasn't down there fucking all their people up. Yep. And probably financing a lot of wars, too, to keep them all miserable. Gates' yeah. polio vaccine causes polio. Mm. No. Mm. Would well, have to. It's the only. Come on, Ron. You know how this works. <laughs> Can you imagine somebody listening to this shit that didn't have any idea what we were talking about? Would be just in sense. Oh, well, we're in the same anyway. Probably because, and you know, we're still alive. Yep. Mm. Just take off your shoes. Go outside, make contact with real live, honest to goodness dirt, and enjoy yourself. Sit Gross. under the tree, lean back. Well, I, I've hesitated from doing this, but I, I did something today, something wild and bizarre. Oh. Yep. I, I, I knocked, a tomato plant. No. Well, that too, but I knocked down a brick wall for my wife without breaking the window in and out. I took out the window without breaking a pane out of a brick wall, about a 10-inch thick brick wall. Damn. And I took it out with a, a sledgehammer so big I could barely pick it up and swing it. <laughs> ah. Oh, I'm small, so I was just using balance and gravity to hit my spots. But I yep. couldn't lift it very high. But, <laughs> yeah, she went out for a walk with the dog and came back, and I was pulling the window down. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, well, that'll she, teach her to leave the house. No, yeah. well, she actually she wanted me to do that for her, and uh, but the thing was, she went out for a walk with the dog and come back, and the damn thing was just about finished. Ain't you safe? No, no. See, I I'm <laughs> old. I know I know how to I know how to use the forces around me to benefit me. You know about you know, fulcrums and points. No, but I've just no. got this natural ability to. Figure out the easiest way to get that thing down without breaking somebody's head. Okay. And I'll use anything, any kind of tools I got around me. It doesn't matter. Sawzall to a you know, sledge. <laughs> right. But hey, that's I enjoy destruction like in, at that level. It's very mm -hmm. strange. I, I used to do it for money when I was in my twenties and thirties. Precision destruction. Yeah, I met a guy that had a property on Clement Street, and he wanted to gut the inside and have it remodeled. Well, I didn't remodel, but I said, man, I can tear this place out with a sawzall, you know, a couple of hammers. And he went, what? Sawzall, two <laughs> hammers, and a pry bar. I gave it, yeah, I gave him a price. He says, hey, how much you, how, will you charge me to haul it out? He said, give me a saw, too. <laughs> so he supplied me with tools, and I did it in four days. Nice. Two stories of, and it was all wood frame, so it was a piece of cake. Yeah. But it was heavy, and, you know, getting that second floor down without me being underneath the part I was dropping that's <laughs> alone. Always, that's very important, yes. Yeah, but. Hey, Don't stand luck, under the thing you're fixing to drop. I am the luckiest little man in the world when it comes <laughs> to work. I'm People go, how the fuck you didn't end up down here on your nose? I don't know. Because <laughs> I don't weigh enough to knock anything over, <laughs> I guess. 
Yeah, I'm 130 pounds of rocks in my pockets. Well, I just felt like bragging because I did, I did something for the wife today that uh, it, I didn't think I was going to be able to do it when I started. And it just, boom, uh, worked. <laughs> Lucky. Nobody Lucky. told you yeah. this. You, couldn't. you love it when a plan but, comes together. But I think that it's some kind of, like you were saying, we have this knowledge inside us, you know, and depending on what I'm doing at the time, some like some academic things just don't work. Okay, but hands-on things. Sometimes when it doesn't look like it can be done, I'm the guy that figures out a way to do it. Yeah. Or I'm so small. <laughs> I had a concrete job in uh, the Bay Area, and I was the only guy small enough to fit through the opening to get under the crawl space <coughs> to get yeah. into it. Speaking so, of which, I need somebody yeah. to come crawl around in my crawl space and do some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? It's... It's such a unique talent to have with an interest to do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Claustrophobia. What other kind of stuff do people have, Rob? Uh, Wait. You know, fears of snakes, spiders. Oh, yeah. Shit like that. That would make you go, oh, it's dark in there. I can't go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any of that. That's my nice. My mom just said I was an idiot, but... <laughs> <laughs> I went, ah, oh, come on, ma. <laughs> you know, it's, nothing scares you. You're going to get killed one of these days. Here I am all these years later. So you were the kid that climbed to the very top of the tree with the, the mm -hmm. one-inch thick branches that were like swinging mm -hmm. back and forth like 30 yeah, feet. Back. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I was falling out of a Look at me well. hanging on by one hand and everything. <laughs> that was about five foot fall get. Five foot tall, getting chased by a group of older kids, oh, and I no. got over. I got over a seven foot wall. Nobody could figure out how I got up there. <laughs> you ran up it. I was so afraid of getting caught. I found a way over that wall. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you grow up and you learn how to stage ground. But when yeah. I was like eleven or twelve, I no, <laughs> I'm, I'm running. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And here I am. You know what? I was teasing with Cirque the other day about this. That I wish I would have uh, had the, the ability to, to call my Leaving America an escape. Because now I've been a brilliant guy. You know, wow, you saw this coming. <laughs> went to Denmark. How brilliant. I know why you went to Denmark. So, uh, yeah. Because that's where Circle is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if she'd have lived in Delaware, you know where I'd be, right? <laughs> or the Sudan or whatever. I told her when I met her, so God damn glad you're not a black guy named Steve con me all this time. Because, wow. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> you know, because sure. the person on the internet that you're, you know, that yeah. you don't know that that's real. But when you find out that's really them, you go, wow. <laughs> Who knew? Because. On the internet, we're all you know, we're all beautiful and rich, oh, yeah. and not, all that shit. Not, not me and Sir. We were honest. <laughs> <laughs> we got along with each other, and it, and it all started in an argument. <laughs> anyway, and that's my my contribution to everything being connected is even though the world is supposedly falling to shit and all that, my my life is. And I, I think that's a matter of choice. You know, I make the best yeah. of whatever I've got around me to, to live with. And, you know, if you're going to complain there, about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm about as comfortable as I've ever been. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But, yeah. but watching on the people in lockdowns, or not my, yeah, it's not what I ever wanted to see. No. No, no, no. I, I'd like things to, uh, I don't know, to be like they are here <laughs> for everyone. And then a socialist country, I don't know what to say. I, I just think we're being so lied to about everything. The, you know, yeah, but they, they give it a label, and that changes the reality of it somehow. Ah, I don't know. You know, stealing is stealing. You call it taxes yeah. or call it, you know, paying you or whatever. You're still taking that guy's time for your money to do something. So, yeah. Eh. Ah, Everything does government has is stolen. I know, and that's sad. I mean, how, well, it's how could we forever. fix this? 
Well, okay, how could we ever fix a mess like this, Larry? Eliminate greed. Uh, eliminate, eliminate lust. Eliminate Ooh. the belief in authority. Yeah, I've been that way forever. <laughs> well, look, it brought you to where you are. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I would say success is a personal emotion thing. You know, and your success may not uh, be visible to other people. Doesn't mean it's not yours. <laughs> well, su success to every person is contingent on what their goals are. I mean, if you've reached your goals, you're successful. Oh, uh, what would my Michael? If your goal that, is to is to land a job and pay rent and and live paycheck to paycheck, then yeah, you can call that successful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But when I was little. Yeah, we used to look at the first star, and if you can see the first star at night, then you get to wish on it. And I oh, yeah. always wish for contentment. Did you ever get it? Yeah. How, How long of a period does it last? Oh, today? I'm content. I'm happy. I'm I'm satisfied with what I've got. Yeah, your voice kind of carries that attitude across. You don't seem like a stressed out. Angry, you know, ball of knots. Worry <laughs> is a demon in your own mind. Yep. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like fighting with your wife, you know. It's all a matter of how long you want to do it for. Yep. Reasonable people understand, oh, I'm mad about something, but you're here. <laughs> I guess I'll just yell at you. You're in front of me. Yeah, <laughs> you're the only one here, so you get to. Right, but see, that's it. that's human human beings being what we are isn't always pretty. Sometimes it takes a little uh, understanding <laughs> to deal with another human being. Oh yeah, I'm I'm evil sometimes, but I get over it. <laughs> well, what's the what's your worst crime against humanity? Did you crime? invent the A-bomb? Crime. What if, did you murder anyone or rob oh. a bank or anything juicy like that? Oh, yeah, I've got 23 personal hand-to-hand -hand kills. <laughs> oh, jeez. Were you in the military? Oh, yeah. I was oh, a tunnel crap. rat. Whoa, I didn't know that. Yeah, I went to Vietnam for two terms. Oh, for well, God's sake. One, okay. one in about three months into the second one. That's when they killed me the second time over there, and I got to come home. Yeah. I, I I know that story, dude. Uh, I didn't realize. Think, I've Wait. talked to you a lot of times, but I never put that together that you were. I haven't heard okay. that story. What story? Um, oh, tell him. Well, uh, the concussion from my from my buddy getting blown up in front of me from a landmine stopped my heart. That was the first time I got killed over there, and then the second time uh, I was. I got shanghai I I went over there in the regular infantry, and the 82nd came in to clear some tunnels in a village that we that we took, and their guys went in and got killed, and they didn't have any more guys little enough to get in the hole, and I was, oh, and so from then got, on, I was with them. You got volunteered, huh? Yeah, I got volunteered. You bet. I got shanghai Damn. Uh, and so the second time I was in a tunnel and a trap door opened and a knife came up and I got killed. But before I died, I killed him. And they they had a a, a rope tied to my ankle and pulled me out. Damn. So it was it was one of those things. But that was a good one because I got to come home. Yeah, yeah. It took a little while, but so I got lucky that. I got killed, so I yeah. got to go home. <laughs> Damn. Oh. The, Vietnam did a lot of good things for me, and I was trained well enough by my father in, in tracking and trailing and knowing what wildlife and, and uh -huh. things like that. And I made it through. Yeah. A lot of guys I know didn't make it through and for them I'm really sorry. Yeah. But it was it was an experience I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy, yet I'm happy that I had it. It it made me into a 
more mature person. Yeah. Yep. And I was brainwashed. Oh, you... I was brainwashed, yeah. yeah. To go and fight for the country. But, I mean, so you're going with the, the patriot thing. You're brainwashed. Well, absolutely, you're yeah. You're Be patriotic. Fighting, fighting for freedom. You bet. Go and kill them little people. They're easy. Ma'am. Oh, I got conned by the school thing until I was about 17. Mm. Yeah, I thought I thought I could use the military for a way to get an education until I was 17 and went, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> but I didn't. Well, when I refused to kill people, everybody had a fit. And then, then they wouldn't accept me in any of the military branches. Because yep. I went, no, I, I'll beat them up, but I ain't going to kill them. I'm with the Muhammad Ali route. And they looked down at me because I'm like five foot tall. Ha, 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 you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> we got a rifle that'll fit you, stupid. Don't worry. I went, oh, the fuck you do. Oh, well, you can't. You don't seem to acclimate into the military with an attitude that I carry. They don't like that. So hmm. No, they want killers. Yeah, and people that are compliant. Sadly, I don't know what... Hmm. See, I didn't never have that uh, patriot thing. I saw it in other people. I grew up around it, but never attached to me. Lucky, yeah. lucky. I don't know what to call it, Larry. You know, you walk your road. I walk my road. I was a little too young for Vietnam. And You're lucky. I've been, oh, you ain't played. I had cousins that weren't. So mm. they both came home, but the, what they would say, no, uh, I wouldn't want to go. But I'd like to go back over there, but not to see the cities of the people. That's some of the most beautiful country I was ever in. Yeah. I love the jungle. Okay, let, let me ask you a question, you and Rob. I read, I don't remember what my source was, but I read that uh, Lady Bird Johnson and Lyndon Johnson had uh, steel plants, or not steel, steel mines and rubber plantation interests in the Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam area. During that war. Yeah, and Lady Bird was one of the primaries in Remington Arms that supplied all the small arms ammunition. Okay, see, a lot of people are not aware of the financial side of this war oh, no. crap we live with. We went over there to steal, just like every damn war that there is. Sure. And nobody right. wants to say that out loud. And they're all involved and wrapped up in it and in every aspect of the war machine. Yep. That's why they call it the military industrial complex. Yep. <laughs> Damn. So I would take it you guys aren't fans of this military industrial complex thing. That's why we're getting no. patents. Why, why would you make something that's incredible? And then only be able to use it for the military so that it can kill people. Yeah. How evil is I that? Can, very. I, whoa. What could I say? Come on. You don't need to be Einstein to figure out that question. Aha! <laughs> Einstein. I, I make fun of Einstein and I'm an idiot. What does that tell you? It tells me that you understand that he was an idiot. Well, he was a very thief. colorful. He was, yeah, he was a yeah. good thief. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, he but was he was a very good. colorful, flamboyant. You know, the, it's like Liberace. The louder you are, the more you're remembered for your clothes and not your fucking piano playing. Right. Yeah. And the guy could, man, he had paws like a bear. He could pound on a fucking piano and do all kinds of shit. But he was all behind all that, you know, glamour and luxury yeah. shit. Well, he, that would have been some really good music to listen to now. But where's the appeal to even be drawn to it? See, society does these things to us on purpose. That's what I think. We're, okay. taught, we're secretly taught not to appreciate things that we are naturally drawn to. But when you look at them closer, you go, eh, that's not what I want. So you pass it when you really should overlook what you're seeing. Pay more attention to what you're hearing. I I think a lot of people let book learning override common sense. 
Give us an example, <laughs> Uncle Larry. Well, Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, I like your examples. <laughs> I, I went to college with people that could quote the books word for word, and they didn't know enough to come in out of the rain. They didn't know to add oil to a car. Things like that. Yeah. Book sense versus common sense. Yeah. I'd a whole lot rather be around somebody with a whole lot of common sense than a whole lot of book learning. Yeah. It's like the difference between Larry and Hans. <laughs> yeah, well, Hans is a fictional character that we bash around in the chat room. <laughs> and Larry is a real man. <laughs> I call Hansel my imaginary friend because I don't know him. Don't think he's really, he's real. Don't think he really exists, but entertains me endlessly. Thank you, Hansel. <laughs> hey, sir. Oh, oh baby, baby. Oh, well, my wife is walking through talking to me while I'm doing radio. Uh oh, let's stop talking about her quick. Oh, she left already. Oh. No, she just, she comes in, bring me coffee or something. Make sure I'm all right. Still alive down there. Like you. I know. Hey, what can I say? I, I'm the grumpiest fucking guy in the world, and I'm, the people that are closest to me will defend me. <laughs> I go, well, yeah, he's a prick, but yeah. Uh, Oh, Should stand tear down a wall. Way. Well, we all got our good sides. Somebody, I mean, even uh -huh. hermits, even hermits have acquaintances, you know, friends and whatnot. Yeah. And this thing about being connected, it's hmm. You can explain it in, to a certain type of mind by saying it's a frequency that we're, we're uh, engaging. What would you call that? Because well, I think you do, but. By choice. It's harmonious thinking. Yeah. Well, hmm. The same mindset. Synchronicity. Yeah. Well, okay, so just, and that's where the duality shit comes into play, and where they manipulate that idea and take it away from us and put it in places it doesn't belong so that we'll be distracted. But yeah, let's talk about yeah. the yin and yang. That's okay. an electrical symbol. Okay. That's that's compression and expansion caused by compression and expansion. That's describing the magnetic field. Yeah. The duality of everything, the positive, the negative, the expand and contract. Little bitty to great big. Hmm. Yeah, uh, one of those speed, videos, speed. I think it was uh, one of Nassim Harriman's. Uh, videos has a has a graphic on there showing the yin gang symbol mm -hmm. and how it's all uh, a depiction of of uh, magnetic and creative forces. Yeah. So your awareness would tip the scale on which way you go with a magnetic force, right? Oh, absolutely. Because uh, I mean, if one is to not be aware that it's available to you. Another is to be taught to scoff at people that bring it up. Mm. Okay. You know, the minute that somebody starts talking to you about frequency and vibration, you're supposed to respond with, yeah, you filthy hippie, go smoke a joint. Okay. No. No, my response is cool. Tell me more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you okay. Have you built that, something? What you got? Let me see. Let me you, see it. You don't agree with me? Tell me why I'm wrong. Change my mind. Wow, you guys are you guys aren't as easy as I thought. Ooh, I have to dig deep into my bag of tricks. No, uh, I, I <laughs> want people to tell me where I've made a mistake. I know that. I've brought I brought Rod on. You made a mistake. He told, "Hey, you made a mistake, Larry." And he said, "Yes, I did." Here, let's do it the correct way. And yeah. we went forward with the right answer. Yeah. Wow. And nobody got suicidal or jumped off the building or nothing over the mistake. It was like life. If you <laughs> never make a mistake, you're not trying. I yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, if you're not making mistakes, you didn't get off the couch. That's it. Yeah, I, I, tried, I, had to to, I tried to fix a pair of glasses by putting a screw in the, eye, in the earpiece. 
Well, I found out that my fingers are too big to go in it. And I fiddled with it and fiddled with it and fiddled with it and finally went and got a pair of tweezers to hold the tiny screw so that I could get it in the hole. So, yeah, you got to make mistakes first. Well, yeah, it's like being that monkey with your hand in, with holding the coconut. You can't that, get it out the hole. That's how yeah. they capture monkeys. That's how they got all of us. They just do it with really. words. Yeah. They do it with words. I'm telling you, I can... I can say things. Yeah. I can say things on the internet to people that just put them over the fucking edge, and I would never say these things to people in nose to nose unless I wanted to fight. Right. And I'm not a I'm not a fighter, so I don't do that. So it's the internet. <laughs> yeah. I blame the internet for making me a rude prick. The internet is your whooping post, huh? <laughs> or is it perhaps a mirror? Mm-hmm. It could be. And what you're seeing in that mirror is you. Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) Or did you indeed step in a pile of shit and not clean your foot when you came in the house? (laughs) Oh, no, I would never do that. I don't know. Well, I'd be in in trouble for a month if I did that. (laughs) Then we're going to have to lean towards you looking in a mirror. It's got to be one or the other. It can't be both. Damn it. (laughs) Hey, I'm making the quiz up as I go. Work with me. Work with me. I'm trying. This is scientific. Hey, this is as scientific as I'm capable of getting. <laughs> no wonder I'm confused. <laughs> well, you me. No, well, you give people two unreasonable choices, and then you sit back and you watch them spin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of the things that got me through college was a study group. There was a group of us that would talk about the the assignments and discuss it. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have understood it well enough to pass. There, hmm. you, you've got to have sounding boards to bounce the ideas off of, no matter how strange they sound. And you can't ever believe everything that you've been taught in school because that's only a little bitty part of the whole picture. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but you don't usually learn that without any experience. So it's kind of a catch-22. Yep. No matter how you slice this. Or there is one alternative, but most people don't, don't walk that road. And that road would be listen to the adults. Oh, heaven forbid. I know, that's what I was told. Don't Nobody trust over 30 can yeah. be trusted, yeah. yeah. But I didn't care, and so what? Um, yeah, I found out early matter. on that yeah. adults, adults lie to you. Okay, and I yeah. found out early that adults also don't lie to you. I found out both e- equally. Yeah. Some are telling well, you shit, and some aren't. There's yeah. ways to tell the difference. Yeah, so it you know it comes with a little experience. You get screwed over a little bit on the road, but by the time you get where you're going, you know what you're doing. Yeah, you, life has no surprises. Well, yeah, for that's, you. You're, that's how it happens. But. Okay, well, Larry had to go to Vietnam to learn his his life changing lesson. Mine was very subtle and nice compared to that. Right. Okay. Well, we I think that. That's probably just something we share in this group thing that we're in, with the Brainiac crowd, you know, that we've got uh, accelerated in, uh, experience in life in certain areas. Yeah. You know, it's like Larry's got this group of guys he's working with, and only so many of them have electrical backgrounds. But they're smart people, so they understand what you're talking about without having to prove it. They well, know they just in tune. It takes a little bit to, to make everybody really understand what you're saying. But once they get it, boom, it's there and they won't ever lose it. A, a picture is worth a thousand words. A symbol is worth a thousand pictures. Yeah. Yep. And they're all smarter than me. And I love that part. I learn stuff every single week that I discuss things with them. But I'm getting them switched over to my way of thinking about magnetics. Oh, because you added magnetics into the equation of the electronic world. Absolutely. 
and came up with a new animal that nobody else ever saw before. That's it. Okay, but other people in past history did the same fucking thing you did. Yep. They just didn't, their information got buried somewhere. Yep. That's what I think. It's everywhere. It's in the, it's in the pictures Mm -hmm. on cathedral walls. It's on cave drawings. It's on rock stone reliefs. It's the Anunnaki tree of life. That's a proton accelerator. Look at how much money and time the system spends on keeping us ignorant. Yep. It's amazing to me. Yeah, sure. And with uh, frivolous, the more frivolous shit there is, the bigger the audience. Yeah, no shit. Like the Super Bowl thing, this last Super Bowl. That fucking uh, halftime show went on the internet. Yeah. On YouTube. I don't know. A couple of days, it was in double digit millions of views. And I wouldn't look at it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah. look at it either. <laughs> I said that to somebody else who went, I, I watched it. Uh, boobies, you know. And I can understand. I'm not, see, I'm not against the boobies. I'm against the crap they do. To get what they to get their message across is it's yeah. not right. <laughs> oh wow! And if it attracts somebody to watch it because it's got boobies, you're probably not the market they're looking for. I'm against them doing that in front of children. Why? Because I think children up to a certain age ought to be totally sheltered from that sort of thing. Till how old? Thirty. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. If I if I had a daughter, she'd be chained to a pole in the basement until she was fifty <laughs> years old. Uh, one of them guys. Huh? Well, <laughs> I read a period back that a child doesn't discern the difference between fantasy and reality till the average age of this this transition is nine years old. And I look back in my own personal history. And I would say that's pretty accurate. Right about nine, you start to notice, you start yeah. to take life more on a different, some kind of wavelength or something changes. Mm-hmm. But I can't identify it really well, but I know called, I know what they're talking it's about. It's called the age of reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't like small children until they're coherent. Wow. I... I was on a bus with Cirque with the first couple of months we were together. We were taking a bus somewhere. And a couple gets on with a kid, or we got on, and they were already there, one or the other. I take a look at the kid, and I say to the couple, I said, what, about eight months? Sure. So I was like a couple of weeks off or something. And how do you do that? I don't know. I don't even know why I, I cared or why I talked to the people. or I just looked at their baby and said that, and that was that. You know, you're just, I'm drawn to do stuff in some situations for no reason like that. Yeah. But it's it, it's kind of like a magnet. Well, it's weird. It's hard to explain to somebody else that hasn't seen me do it. Like, Cirque's seen me do it, so she knows what I'm talking about. But I'm not socially a bubble butterfly. I'm very isolated and quiet. Until you get me going, and then that's fucking another story. Then you're on your own. Yep. So for me to be drawn into conversation with a total stranger in a public setting is it's not a very common thing to see. But when it happens, it's, it's like uh, like two forces are drawn to each other. It's very hard to uh, <laughs> it's hard to explain because I don't I can't really I can say it from memory, but I can't say this is how it will happen next time. You're in a harmonious frequency with them. Weird, huh? Yeah. I, and there's no way to explain. There's no parallels. There's just some people you just go walk up to them and, hey, boom. Some, yeah. Some, you say them. Yeah. Very rarely does it happen, but when it does, it's, I'm like the, the two kids down in town that I know. Same thing. I was wearing a T-shirt, and I saw the kid look at the shirt and recognized it. So I knew, hey, you're one of us. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, in Denmark, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was wearing a, a Boondock Saints t-shirt. Uh-huh. So to recognize that t-shirt as the movie and be familiar with it, and all this stuff happens in a blink of passing people in the street. 
So if it takes yeah. that much attention, it requires it. Yeah. And it turns out, you know, the smokers in town, <laughs> we get along with each other. Yeah. Don't have to advertise or nothing. You know, it's, people just kind of know. I think a water seeks its own level. Yep. Well, all these little, uh, over the years, all these little sayings the old people used to say. You know, now I'm an old people, but when I was young, they were old. And they were right. I can't think of anything that I was instructed not to do that if I had done them, I wouldn't have suffered. Yep. Yeah, people tell you things from experience, and if you don't gain knowledge from that, it's your own fault. Okay, well, how do you stay healthy in a profoundly sick world like the one we're in? Mentally or physically? Both. You are a motor. You are an engine. You can't run diesel in a gasoline engine. Put the proper foods in you, and you won't get sick. I haven't had a cold or the flu since I was a teenager, and I eat junk food. No, well, I've had a cold for a, a little bit now. Not really a cold. I think I've got a, a, an ear infection because of my smoking. you got to be coronavirus. Probably, but shit, I've been out working in the dam out in the yard. And the, the temperature here is, isn't warm, but the humidity makes it feel bit, like it's 10 degrees higher than it is to me because I'm, I'm from the... Uh, L.A. So the weather change here is just it's like slapping me in the head with a brick. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's a small price to pay. You know, it's a little too cold in the winter, a little too hot in the summer. <laughs> I got the perfect Jew life. <laughs> I get to bitch every day of the year. <laughs> and and nobody gives a shit because it's about the fucking weather. Wow. What do you do? Well, if you're going to complain about something, at least make it not personal. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't even blame um, climate change on Greta anymore. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I think she's the one that causes it all. Well, she's just all that hot air she's spewing. <laughs> <laughs> Poor kid. Uh, she's an actress from a family full of actors. Get real. Yep. Yeah. You know that, right? Yep. There, there's still people on the RLM that don't. They, they won't accept the truth about this climate change crap. But they got the corona to replace it for a few months. Yeah, yeah. We're still coming out of an ice age. We're going to gain another couple of degrees, and then it's going to start cooling down again. It's a process that takes almost a thousand years for the transition. And there you have it. That's it. That's all there is to it. Well. <laughs> I, I knew a mathematician that figured up all of the electronic stuff in the world, so he thought, and decided that the heat that each one of those produced, sure enough, was enough to raise the temperature of the earth one degree. Whoopee fuck. Don't mean a thing. The earth is still warming up. No matter how much tax they charge you for whatever you do, <laughs> it's not going to change that. Hmm. Yeah. No. Well, try try using logic and reason on a modern day mind. Oh, it doesn't boy. work. No, it doesn't. And I've kind of abandoned logic and reason because of that. Because the majority of people don't have a fucking idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I didn't see that on the TV. It's not true. Yeah. <sighs> well, sadly, that's what we got. You know, it's not our fault. Is it? <laughs> People don't understand that if you've got a rusty tool, you can soak it in Coca-Cola and it will clean it off. They don't understand what that will do to your guts. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I drank it until I saw that video from Mexico and then I stopped. I went, holy shit. I thought they were just telling stories. I had yeah. no idea. No. <clears throat> shit will eat away a nail. Yeah, uh, yep. he said him playing a rusted bumper with a bottle of Coke. Yep. Holy fuck! Yep. And a little, and it was rusted pretty bad. It, but they had to do some scrubbing. I mean, it wasn't like they just poured it on and wiped it off. It took a little work. The but old gas fuck, station hey. bathrooms pour Coke in the toilet and it'll clean all that <laughs> crud out of it. <laughs> oh, 
way. No, uh, the world we live in, Larry. No. And we take everything. See, that's what I'm so upset about is the big places have been consumed by corporations and instant everything. and They lost their soul. And I used to be involved in all that shit. So I can look back and go, wow, how the fuck did I survive and live and go on to beyond that? Should have killed me when I was in it. Yep. The city I, light. I yeah. crawled out of the creek, drank water from the hose, and played with the dog in the mud. I ain't dead yet. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's not the kind of thing I was talking about. But it's similar. You know, it's like the generations just had a different version of the old thing. Mine, mine was just when I was in my 20s and 30s, it was more uh, socially and... Uh, drug induced because you know drugs were everywhere yeah Got but that was the society that I was living in it wasn't like uh, you could go to another part of town and that was a different part of town people didn't do that shit there then you go to this other part of town and guess what Everybody, third person you look at is going to know somebody that has a friend <laughs> <laughs> yep well the 80s were fun. I had a fucking blast. And I lived in some of the best cities through it. San Francisco and New York. <laughs> the, the, the last of the 80s. And London. That was probably the, the topping to the whole thing. I got to London before they stopped you smoking on the bus. So my first visit there was still free. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I got to see the, the London that 30 years ago that people are just, they read about it in stories. Then what? No, didn't be like that. Oh yeah, it did. <laughs> we shot 22s in the basement of my high school. <laughs> yeah. You had gun cleaning day. And yeah. Shit. People yeah, had and classes on how to handle their weapons. And all had that. gun racks in our pickup the trucks. Truck. Yeah. We had archery, what, what? archery classes. Yeah. What happened to us? We turned yeah. into a group of pussies. Pussified. Wow. Well, at least I'm in Denmark where it's it's kind of pussified over here. They got bikers, though. I mean, some of these bikers don't look like anybody to fuck with, though. Then my bartender friend that has the bar, he grew up with all these guys. He calls them knuckleheads. So, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of bike. No, yeah, I know it's a bike. But <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure what he meant was he grew up. You know, I grew up with these guys. They're they're yeah. They're not what you think. Well, that's a bunch of that's yahoos. You know them though. Uh, that changes the whole game. Mm -hmm. When you've known somebody their whole life compared to you just met them 20 minutes ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you don't speak Danish. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. that. that uh changes the dynamic a little bit. See why I'm amazed that I'm still here? I speak bear claw and, and apple fritter. Is that good enough? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, and I think that uh, people in small places like this are just, they're easier to get along with. Yeah. They're not so much worried about bullshit. And yeah. where you're from, as long as you're not feeding off them, where you're from and what you do is your business. Yeah. But, it it seems like the more rural you are, the more common sense you have, the more varied knowledge you have. I know some farmers that can fix every bit of equipment that they've got and heal every animal that they've got. Wow! Yeah, because they have to. Geniuses. Yeah, they have to. It's not it's not that they're smart so much as that it's a necessity, and they've taken time. See, I think everybody has the equal potential for intelligence. Yes. Uh, I don't believe this IQ bullshit. I, I think everybody no, is as yeah. smart as anybody else. It's all a matter of how much effort you put into gaining knowledge. Or and, application. And then, and then being able to apply it. Yeah. And, yeah. and not holding yourself back. What I see with so many people is those three little words, or four little words, I can't do that. Yeah. Oh. I don't know mm. how. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's because you haven't made any fucking effort to learn how or even try how to do that. Exactly. Ouch. Are you giving us the schooling tonight, Rob? 
not you particularly, just the truth. people, oh, man, people in what? general. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think I'm any different than anybody else in the long run. You know, I've got my shit side too, just like everybody else, just different. We're we're taught to identify all the wrong shit. We call it politics and country and all this nonsense. Yeah. And there, there's more to life than the paper world. In, in, the, in the cities, there's always somebody that will do it for you. In the country, you got to do it yourself. Exactly. <laughs> That's, That's it. right. Or know Cause, somebody. Because the guy from else. the city is going to charge you double to come out all the way out in the freaking boonies to do it. Yep. So, Yeah. You either, well, do, that's, you either do that's, it yourself or it doesn't get done. See, wow. That's the way it is living alone. Ouch. we got to find a way to soften people up. Man. They're, they're too dumb and they're too soft. Well, not soft. How do I mean it? You know, They're, they're hard-shelled, but they're gooey on the inside. Well, I don't think they're what they claim to be. You know, like me. I'll tell you right now. The last thing in the fucking world I need is a gun. I don't need a gun. I don't care. Well, what if the cops come? Well, then they, then that happens. Big deal. I'm not the type that needs that. So because of that, I get called lots of names. Ooh. And I think it's the, quite the opposite. I don't think I'm afraid. I think I just don't need it. And they go, well, that's because this. Well, I don't live in that frequency or something because what do I need it for? And if I hold that thought. Maybe that's the whole answer to my part. You know, that works for me. Doesn't mean it work for you. I use them but for I've been, entertainment. Okay, right, and I'm all for that. But I'm just saying, for me, I don't find them entertaining. I find them something to wield around if I get drunk and have fun with, and that's dangerous. Don't do that. So nah, I'm just nah. I'm not cut out for it. So in, instead of trying to control everybody else, I just tell them no, keep. Keep me, don't let me drink and be around that shit. I'm stupid. So, there you go. That's why I quit drinking. I'm stupid when I drink. I want to fight. Yeah, it's, I, it's well, not the gun, it's the drink. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, but see, when, I don't know. When I'm around people with guns, they usually drink. Or, it's hard to explain, man. I haven't been home in years, but keep him away from the gun. <laughs> yeah. Ah, well. That's what I've been told. I don't see. I don't act out when I'm smoking. I'm just me. When I drink, sometimes you drink a little too much. You get stupid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, now know. I'm older, controlled myself, but uh, I've accepted my weakness and just let it go. Instead of uh, I've got a right and all this one. I don't give a fuck. If I got a, if I got a need, I'm going to go get one. Yeah. That. Oh, that. See. That's. Uh, Where's that gone in America? Why do you got to always be prepared for shit? Why can't you just make do at the time you need something and go get it? We've got to be prepared over here because there's so much corruption. Yeah. There's corruption here, too. Yeah, uh, but you can buy it off. <laughs> well, they don't have, a, uh, they don't have a, a police station that is based here. So they got to call yeah. 20 miles away, 20 kilometers away to the next hell rod to get the police to come out here. And it's got to be a good reason or they won't. Or they no. got to be loose. The thing time. Is, is they're not trying to transform your, the society over there at this point. They've already gotten it the way they want it there. Oh, yeah. Years ago. Sure. Over here, it's, they're in the middle of trying to transform it into socialism, basically. And so that's why we're getting all the turmoil. Well, I read a few things about snitches the other day. Oh man, what a what a slap in the face that was. Yeah, because it it says on, on the paperwork that if you sign if you sign this thing, you had to check a box that gives this uh, it's public information. <laughs> so your accuser gets to see it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Whoa, they're trying to start fucking trouble here. The way they're doing the behind the scenes legalities of all this shit are just it's a snake pit. Somebody's gonna get stung sooner or later. It can't last for this this complacency of, of the world right now. <laughs> it's gonna snap. Somebody's gonna go whoop. 
Well, That's yeah. what I think. I mean, well, it's going to come down to survival. Yeah. How, how, do you, how do you figure that? Well, it's just like uh, Grim's posting in the chat room right now. Beef prices to explode rec- to record highs. More stores limit meat purchases. And oh, no shit. The, wow. They're, they're killing the, uh, the, the supply chain, the food supply. That's what this whole thing has done. Uh, with all the restaurants closes, the, the supply has dwindled. And so the ranchers and farmers have all these surplus things that they've got nobody to sell it to because the restaurants are all empty. Yeah, I've read all that. And, and I just... So this burp in the <laughs> supply chain has happened. So, and uh, as uh, Mary and the farmer could tell you, the uh, you know these things come in seasons. They have a harvest season for for everything, and when you skip that or cause a, an interruption in that, it creates a burp in the supply chain. So. At some point, that's going to hit, and it's going to wreak havoc. And it, it, it's, it's like they, you know, they keep saying, "Okay, everything's going to go back to normal once they declare everything's going to go back to normal." Um, but it doesn't work like that. The damage is done. It's already done, and it's coming down the pipe. And so that's. You know, but we have to look forward to it. And it's going to take a long time to recover from that, even under good circumstances. Now, is it safe to say this is because things are so consolidated by big corporations? To a certain extent, yes. I mean, if things were smaller, that wouldn't have been so easy to shut yeah. everything apart. Or would it have been exactly, easier? Exactly, yeah. They've taken over the last hundred years... We've gone from a rural society to an urban society. And, yeah. and uh, you know, it used to be, you know, everybody had a garden. My niece grew in the grocery store. Raised a few raised a few chickens and maybe a pig or yeah. a cow if you had a few acres. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, everybody had something going on. They canned their own food and... Um, but they've transitioned us into this uh, ready-made, disposable society uh, that, uh, you know, everything comes in a box and and uh, it's ready in five minutes. I like that idea. Uh, I was making a joke. What? The convenience is going to kill us. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Cirque's got some years, you know, planned ahead for me. So I got to roll with all these changes, you know, no matter what they are. So, hmm. and then of course I have my personal limitations. So depending on you know how far this governments take this freaking uh, Corona crap this time, it's going to hit us or every year until they wear us down. Yeah, because there's yeah. too many of these monkeys out there that don't have a fucking clue what a virus does they're going to insist on everybody get one instead of why don't you get one to protect yourself and leave me the fuck alone i don't want one how can you how can i get you sick if you got your virus you know your shot yeah Yeah, that that if how can if vaccines work why are you afraid of me me afraid of people yeah exactly yeah. That's the whole point of you getting your fucking vaccine. Yeah, yeah. if oh, vaccines man. work, then, then if you've had yours, then uh, you, you got nothing Ta-da. to worry about. You're good. And yeah. there's plenty what of proof that of? that's not the case. Because, well, maybe it's because deep down inside. Yeah, they know it's wait, bullshit. Wait, <laughs> that we're vibrating on this frequency together that we go, mm, I, and you can't say no against the state because you're status. And you you get electrocuted or something for it. You know, it gives you a mental zap or something. There's yeah. got to be a punishment to this to go against the truth. How else could you be blind to the truth? Right. Why would the truth hurt you to hear it, that you got to fight it with a lie? It makes no sense. But that's what we're facing. So, what? We must be in, like, the most ignorant time in history. 
uh, and at the same time, the most uh, knowledgeable. Then will you explain all the monkeys throwing shit, please? Well, very few people believe the hundred year plan. Yeah. Okay. And I think it's been going on longer than that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, you would preach to the choir, Larry. Go on. Yeah. Absolutely. Give us a hail, Larry. <laughs> all, all we do is, is everybody that's got some power goes and steals something from somebody that doesn't have the power and rewrites their books and kills all their all their wise men and starts over again. We've been losing knowledge right along ever since. I believe Under the guise of education. Yeah. yeah. I believe that over the past 400 million years, there's been civilizations that have risen and fallen that were much more uh, advanced than we are now. Uh, look at the laws that we live under, all this regulation, and you can't do this if it's Tuesday afternoon unless you're wearing a... What? You know, I'm bigger like, than you are. I can make you do uh, any damn thing I want you to. Okay, where where does... It, Resistance come into this way. Doesn't anybody say no? Come on. You got to be true to yourself. Believe what you believe and live by it. Don't be wishy washy about it. Don't give a shit what other people think. What you think for you is right. Hmm. It's what works for me. I can't. I can't argue with that. You know, because me and Cirque don't see eye to eye in every fucking issue in life. But for the most part, the important shit we do. But the little stuff we differ on all the time. Yeah. That's yeah. human beings being people. Well, so yeah. what? If, if everybody liked the exact same things, life would get very boring. Wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Or if you didn't give your partner a little time to, like, to do their own little thing. Like me, I like to do what I like to do. Sometimes yeah, it's a uh, like puzzle. Everybody their own little, little personal time yeah, and space. Yeah, but well, we've been strayed away from that kind of stuff. You know, you're being selfish. What? Being selfish? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Huh? Wow. A little bit of selfishness is okay. Yeah, but I, I use my selfishness to please other people, too, so it's it gets everybody what they want all at the same time. That's fine, if that's what you... Yeah, that, that's, well, that's what that's, worked for me, Rob. That's the way it's supposed to work. Well, Grim, Grim and Larry are different kind of people. Yeah. And and still, me and you are very different. But we got a similar yeah. kind of a uh, lifestyle, but we're, we're and we agree on a lot of shit, but we disagree on a lot of shit too. Yeah, well, just well, doesn't matter. Does. I don't think that it matters. So, but yeah. so what? I don't require you to agree with everything I say and do or think. You don't? Uh, to be friends. Boy, is that a weight off. <laughs> don't you feel better now? Yeah. Nah, I feel the same as I did before. But uh, certain people that are basically diametrically opposed to everything I think and, and believe, mm -hmm. you know, I don't really give a shit oh. if we're friends or not, you know? Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I guess I do. Yeah, because yeah. it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. You don't have a personal value into this shit. We're just looking at life through this. Like, uh, <laughs> I call it an illusion. My life is an illusion. Well, I've, I don't know. I've found out but, through the course of my life that, um, with my beliefs, <laughs> I'm gonna get way more people that uh, disagree with me than don't. And oh, I find the opposite. No, I get a lot of agreement. No, no snows. Well, in these in these yeah. circles, like in the chat, I get a lot of agreement. Um, but people in general, just out in real life here, yeah, uh, yeesh, I I get a certain amount of agreement. With, depends on what I bring up, but ah, you okay. know. If I if I really go into talking about all the things, like the things we talk about and things like that, you know, the eyes glaze over and like and, baking pat, like um, baking soda, yeah, um, or, or anything, anything. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, no, it ain't. <laughs> you know, or how you know the government yeah. the taxation is theft. You know that was that's always been my big deal. That's how I got started. I was the untaxed man. I was teaching people how to stop paying income tax and all kinds of shit. And yeah, we don't even have any money. We yeah, have well, it's not real. You never have. place. But nope. and so you know, I've always been on that side of the. <laughs> Of the deal where I've always expected to be, uh, to have a limited number of possible opportunities to make friends, real friends with people. Hmm. Yeah, well, that goes to that wavelength stuff, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's what I, yeah, you, you vibrate. Some, it's something about, I don't know, how, I guess vibration is the only way to word it. How do you identify yeah. that? <laughs> it's insane. Well, yeah, it's but, hard. Yeah. But here we are. Here we are doing all this stuff that we do, and it's like, wow, being alive is so underrated. Yes, it is, because being dead is so much better. <laughs> yeah, we right. Do all the work in the meat suit. And we got five minutes left. For yeah, I was tonight. just noticing that. Damn, that went quick. Well, I felt yakky tonight too. Yeah, we just stuff. we just had a rap session. I we had, well, I kept notes through the show. We covered a couple of things, but yeah, this is dropping a coil. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, uh, anything's liable to happen. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna maybe next. Uh, we're gonna shit all over the place. <laughs> well. I'll tell you what, maybe if you if you want a more structured show, just plan for yeah, it. I'll hey, go I'm, along with whatever you come fun. up with. Yeah, fun. Okay. I've been lazy this week. I didn't get a damn thing done on the coil. Um, uh, well, I didn't think you did. Not 100% lazy. I've been working around the house, but I've been neg- negligent on the, the coil thing this week. and it's, it's I, I think you'll save yourself a whole lot of heartache if you'll get some yarn. And wind with yarn for the first two or three tries until you get it where you think it's right. Yeah. And then, uh, then do it with wire. Yeah. Oh. Yarn is a whole bunch easier. Yeah, I've got some uh, paracord. That'll work real well. Yeah. Last minute tips from the teacher. <laughs> yes, sir. Much appreciated. Yeah. And there, there's a lot of, of how to plot a Taurus and things like that on the Internet. Uh, well, that's what I was going to ask you. That one you gave me, the rodent coil. Uh, yeah. How to plot the rodent coil. Is that the same uh, pattern? That's a nine by nine. Okay. What's the difference? What, what, what is this eight-inch coil I'm doing, and what's the difference between it and a nine by nine? Okay. On the one you're doing, you'll have the width at, as one unit and the length as two units. Okay, those those actual lengths will change with almost every square or every parallelogram that you put on your toroid. But the ratio is always there. It's one wide and two long. That's a nine by eighteen. A nine by nine is a one by one. I get it. That's all that, you need to that's, know. That that gave me the click I needed. Good. Now I understand that. Okay. Now I can move forward. I still have to print my ABS donut too. Uh, and I, and the folks that are wiring, that are making coils, remember it's on on off on on off. The whole world is on, on, off. That means two circuits together, a space. Two circuits together, a space. On, on, off. Right. That gives your magnetic field between the two circuits a room to interact with each different wire and expand. That empty space, the off, gives that whole field more expansion. As those empty spaces get closer to the center of the donut, they get closer together. They form they a compress. V, yeah. and that's compression. So you've right. got expansion and compression on the outside of the coil, and on the inside of the ring, 
you have three, since it's a triple Mobius, you have three compression zones that make three more tornadoes inside the ring right. to increase the magnetic field. On and on off. And with that, we are out of time. Bye. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Um, Flash, are you gone? Yeah. Uh, no, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, that's it. We're done. Neil, Grandpa. Good night, everybody. <laughs>